So now we're going to take these different charts and graphs and instead of just taking the data off of them, now we're going to do something with it. So on these top couple sections, we're just going to find the mean for these different sets of numbers. Now, remember the mean is the average. So when you want to find the average, you add all your values and then divide by how many values you have. So this is how you would find your test average. You add up all your tests and divide by how many tests you took and you get your test average. So let's walk through this one. The first thing you want to do for all of these is actually write down your data. Okay, so we want to make sure we have all the numbers correct here. Order doesn't really matter too much on this because we're just going to add them all up and then divide by how many we have. So let's think ahead. Once we add up all of these numbers, and not just how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're going to add them all up, all 9 numbers, and then divide by how many we have, which we just counted is 9. There are 9 of these. That's what we're going to divide by. So we're going to add, 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 add all of them up, and then divide by how many we, we've got. So this is 12. I've got a 16. These three are 17s, so I'm going to have to add 17 three times. I've got two 18s, I've got a 21, and a 22. So what I need to do, if I want to find the average, and it should fall somewhere in the middle here, is I'm going to add these up and then divide by how many I've got. Now I've got 9, so I'm going to divide this by 9. I have to add all these up, so I'm going to get the sum and divide it by 9 because there's 9 values. So you just plug this in your calculator, 12 plus 16 plus 17, on and on and on. You do that, you end up with 158. Okay, that's from this plus 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 this. And then your calculator is going to do the work for you. Okay, you're actually going to divide. So 158 divided by 9, and we'll round to the nearest tenth here if we need to. So 158 divided by 9. Okay, not a perfect number, but this will round up. So we'll do 17.6. So what this number represents is the age people were when they got their first job. So there were nine different people surveyed here or something like that. And the average was around 17 or 18. So in between 17 and 18 was the average here. All right, number seven. We're going to do the same exact thing. The data is just given to us a little bit different. So in this one, we don't need to put them in order. So I'm just going to run through the numbers. This one's a six. This one's a two. This one's a five. Another six. Another two another six, that's a three, that's a four, and that's a two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect, because there's nine people, or nine books. So this chart is talking about the length of book titles. So there's nine different books. Each one of those has a different number of words in their title. We want to find what's the average number of words in all these books. So we're going to add all these numbers up, and if you did that, you end up with 36, and there's 9 of them, so we're going to divide by 9, and the average here is 4. All right, so the mean is the average. Order doesn't matter. You're just going to add them all up and then divide by how many you've got. So for the next one now, we're going to do the median. This is the middle. And the order matters here. Because if it's going to be in the middle of our data, I need all the smaller numbers on one side and all the bigger numbers on the other, and this is going to be right in the middle. So I can't just have numbers randomly all over. So for this one, it is going to matter the order that I put these in. So as I start to take the data and write it out, I'm going to start with the smallest and work my way up to the biggest. So starting right here, I have a 2 got a 3, 
two fours, a five, a six, two eights, a nine, and an eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's always good to double check, make sure you didn't miss any numbers. Okay, so I've got them all. So I've got to pick the middle number. So the easiest way to do that is to cross off the smallest and the biggest and just keep doing that until you end up all the way down to either one number or two numbers. If there's two numbers in the middle, then you're going to go right in between them. Or if you're just left with one number in the middle, then that's your middle number. So if I cross off the smallest and the biggest, then the smallest and the biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest. In this case, because I have an even number, I have 10, an even number, I'm going to end up with 2 here in the middle. Whereas if I had an odd number of values, I'd end up with just one number, and that would be my median. The median's got to be in the middle of these two. So what number is exactly between 5 and 6? That would be 5.5. So the median number of hurricanes is 5.5, five and a half. Now you're not going to have half a hurricane, but this is always talking about an average. So out of all your data, five and a half falls right in the middle. That's all the median's telling you. Okay, so we did the mean, which is the average. We did the median, which is the middle. And then all the way down here, we're going to do the mode and the range. Mode is the one you see the most. What's nice about that is you don't always have to write the numbers out to figure it out. And the range is just how far is it from smallest number to biggest. So for these, I don't have to rewrite all these numbers out, which is really nice. So for some of the others like median and mean, you're going to have to. But for this, for mode, I don't have to because what happens the most? So as I look at this stem and leaf, if I was going to write this out, first number and second number gives me the tens and the ones. Six and a seven is 67. So five and a seven is 57. Six and a four is 64. And 67 and 68. Remember, each one of these leaves represents a different value. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I was going to make a list of these numbers, I'd have 11 numbers. 57, 57, 64, 67, on and on and on. Now the mode is which one appears the most. Well, there's only 181 and there's only 183. I have different numbers here and different numbers here. But I have a 57 and a 57. That's the one that's going to show up more than once. So my mode is 57. Now one mistake I can see people making is just, they'll just say that 7 is the mode because they just see the number 7 a lot of times. But this 7 represents 67. So it's different than the 57. So be careful, you have to combine the stem and the leaf. So the mode, the one that happens the most here, is 57. Remember, you can have more than one mode. So if there was another 3 here, then the other mode would also be 83. The mode can be 57 and 83. It can be more than one. And if none of them appear more than once, if they're all just there once, then you would say there's no mode. There's no mode at all. Okay, the range is your distance from the smallest to the largest. Well, the largest is 83. And if I want the distance to the smallest, I'm going to subtract. The smallest number is 57. So I can just go from this number to this number. And if I subtract those two, I get 26. And that's the range. How far does this range? So this is life expectancy in different countries. So in some countries, life expectancy is only 57. And in another country, the life expectancy is 83. And there's a lot in between. But the range just tells you how spread out everything is. There's a country with 57. There's a country with 83. So the range of numbers is 26. Where if we took a smaller sample, maybe our range would be really small, like one or two, like everybody's really close together. Okay, so the range kind of tells you how spread out your data is. So let's do it for number 10 now with the frequency chart. So remember the frequency chart tells you how many times something happens. So when you're looking for the mode, I want to know which one happens the most. Well, the frequency is telling me how many times it happens. So if it happened four times and all the other times were two and one, 
then this represents the mode. Now, not the number four, it's the number nine. So these are different people's shoe size. So four people had a shoe size of nine, where only one had a five and a half, and one had an 11, and two had a 10. So what happens the most is a shoe size number nine. Okay, so nine is the mode. And the range, you're going to go from the biggest to the smallest. So the biggest is 11, the smallest is five and a half. So my range of numbers, if I subtract these two, is five and a half. Now just be careful, this five and a half is not because of this number, it's just the difference between these two. Just like over here, it was the difference between these two. All right, so now that covers how do I interpret this data and now how do I do something with it?